the topics that we cover in this particular series are the ones which are appearing in daily newspapers how they can be beneficial for you to increase your knowledge plus understand the topic and use these in any answer or any discussions or any other interview so let us start with today's topics first topic is regarding lessons regarding technology in economy and security this will be covered in our first part second one is what are the small language models in ai artificial intelligence has many models large language models and small language models so what is the difference among them it can be asked in gs3 also then number third nhrc accreditation process and its impact national human right commission actually its accreditation process is currently going on and what kind of impact it will have so we will deal with it it is part of our gs2 answer then comes the next topic supreme court backing electronic voting machines and a supreme court says that electronic voting machines cannot be tampered with so it stands by the election reforms those were brought in by the election commission so the part of the election reforms so the first one new productive force modernizing technological foundation of the economy and national security must be a top priority for any government in india science and technology has long been a major part of the developmental story science and technology is a part of the major developmental story because science and technology not only reduces the cost actually with which you know the products are made because new technology always try to reduce the cost of the product but it also makes you aware about what is happening across the globe in the new sectors because those technological improvements can always actually gives you a lead as compared to other competitors science and technology have long been a major part of our developmental strategy strategy over the last decade india has seen that it is leveraging digital technologies for the delivery of the services so delivery of the services to the citizens actually has got a major boost either through digital india program or even the upi payment actually has made india a world leader in the digital technology itself renewable energy is another focus area where science and technology has played a very very bigger role renewable energy has the potential to not only lower the not only lower the climatic you know adverse phenomena or emissions but also has a brighter chance to perfect actually india's energy security so focus on mission more to put india back on the map of semiconductor production is also one of the technological prowess that india is seeking to achieve because if you want to get a better self reliance on the electronic vehicle industry and other renewable industries then semiconductor mission is very very important for us developing a strategy for acceleration of india's artificial intelligence capability is another answer you must know that as india is a great or it capital of the world and is treated as a great service based economy if we can somehow actually you know manufacture good quality products here and take the manufacturing uh, for the percentage of the gdp or contribution of the manufacturing to the gdp somewhere around 25 or more of the gdp then not only we will be having a prosperous society where per capita income levels of the people will be higher but even the employment level of the people will become higher because manufacturing provides you lot of jobs so jobs phenomena of the country can be achieved if we provide a better manufacturing environment in the country so manufacturing is that is why important so when information technology will meet the manufacturing or it means that the services actually will meet the product science and technology will definitely make us a great superpower so these are the goals right now what is happening in the world is we are saying that there is a fight between us and china because china is trying to leap frog in the technological domain why china is because china wants its economy to actually you know move away from the consumption led or export driven economy especially in the uh, low value high quantity product phenomena to a high value maybe a low quantity phenomena that is why science and technology can play a major role in this science and technology for china can not only you know give it a heft from away from consumption led to a service uh, sorry a science tech driven economy 
but also can deal with whatever the you know restrictions or sanctions that the us is putting on china us and its western allies are now starting to put actually china in a basket where they are trying to limit the kind of you know information or the technology sharing that is done by the companies why it is being done because us position is being threatened day and day out so that is the big challenge so that's why china actually is trying to push deep technology higher chinese president launched the current uses of the term last september during a visit to china's old industrial heartland in the northeast of the country the location for the uh, speech actually was chosen to turn around the northeastern belt that is the rust belt into a shining tech belt because chinese people know that if they want to take the country to a sustainable path of growth the technological upgradation is definitely required and in a world that is dominated by the us or western technologies if china get can actually win you know customers on the basis of science and technology then china can win in any sphere and the chinese people know it so as the chinese premier or chinese president is talk of the china's nationalism and seeks to reduce reliance on the foreign technology full control over the new productive forces has become a major strategic objective for beijing it is not only in the area of say semiconductors or electrical vehicles but it is also in the area of passenger uh, spacecraft passenger craft as well as you know the defense actually is one area where high technology item can always win you not only customers but also a strategic dimension when the country is secure by the weapons of its own making and if it transports or if it exports actually work or, or 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 products actually to outside countries of its own technologies then it's no then it knows actually that which country have what products and in what capacity these products can be used so the west is investing big also the president joe biden actually has started to put limits on the chinese uh, you know uh, the kind of earlier they used to uh, send or share the information about a particular technology the task for india is beyond this in india science and technology has been a major part of its development and strategy over the last decade we have seen india leveraging digital technologies for the de- delivery of services the manifesto also has a sections on technology and innovation that promises among other things to make india a leading space power promote a robust national research and development infrastructure set up a research fund and launch a new mission for quantum computing so to keep pace with the new global race for mastery over new productive forces india needs to undertake a sweeping overhaul of its technological departments so the new work that india needs to do is india needs to undertake a sweeping reform or overhaul of its technological departments significantly raise the national expenditure on r and d research and development and encourage greater participation of the private sector in the research development and production of the modern technologies the entrance science and technology monopolies under the government created in early years after independence are out of the sync with the imperatives of building a large technology driven economy modernizing the technological foundation of the indian economy and national security that's why must necessarily be at the top of the agenda for the new government we now explain why the science or technology is important for our country because science and technology not only bring you out from the uh, daily level you know all those irritations but also improves the quality of the workforce in your stem factor stem in science technology engineering domain are those domains which gives you not only quality jobs but also improves the quality of your economy sustainability in your economy improves if we become a product nation becoming a product nation is achieved or becoming a manufacturing nation is achieved through growth in the science and technology as you know self reliance in science and technology is important because you must know in the defense sector how the cryogenic engines actually were refused to be shared with india and then india took a lot of time to build those cryogenic engines role of science and technology in mitigating the post pandemic world where 
vaccines actually were in lesser quantities but india produced its own vaccines and vaccinated people and suddenly brought the country out of the pandemic and you must have seen that the kind of economic growth that was visible that time so this is another area where science and technology can play a very big role you must also know that once we become a product nation then the employment levels in an economy will become more sustainable the growth will be more inclusive and more people will be getting jobs so per capita income level of the people will be higher and the growth sustainability will give the fruits of the growth to the larger section of the society this will create a sustainable demand in an economy which actually then will feed to the overall health of the economy also that's why science and technology is important for any any country's developmental status as india seeks to develop or become a developed country by 2047 getting a significant foothold in the high and new technology items is very important you must see that india through production linked incentive scheme is trying to improve the contribution to the global supply value chains and why india is trying to do that because it does not want to become a a, a, a kind of you know actor or a kind of it, it does not want to become a follower in a domain where few of the countries actually you know are the actors suppose say china which was controlling the chips that time how much the chip supply were influenced and how much cost actually increased of the chips you must know that in 2020 2021 how it was affecting the domestic industry so india does not want to repeat that kind of situation so that's why science and technology is important for the growth then comes the second topic and that is microsoft launching p3 pfi3 that is a, a small language models the difference between small and large language models we will deal so small language models are the compact versions of the large language models which can comprehend and generate human languages or text the new model expands the selection of high quality models for customers offering more practical choices as they build the generative ai application so this phi3 is a small language model now must understand that what is the small language model and how it is different than the section so phi3 actually it, it has been manufactured by microsoft and phi always talks about that you know a small language model should also be having that particular capability so when we when we say that phi3 mini is a sln simply small language models are more streamlined versions of the large language models when compared to the large language models smaller ai models or artificial intelligence models are also cost effective to develop and operate and they perform better on smaller devices like laptops and smartphones according to microsoft small language models are great for resource constrained environments including on device and offline interface scenario because in the large language models you have to feed a large amount of data but in a small language you do not need to feed a large amount of data and the data that is available on device and offline interface scenario it can be done into that particular thing so the company claims such models are good for scenarios where fast response times are critical so in the large language models you may not have the fast critical response time while in the small language models you have the fast response time so number one difference is small language models are on the device itself like laptops and the smart tablets while the large language models are done on a very very large computer networks small language models are also having a fast reaction time or fast response time while the large language models actually lack this in small language models actually the computing capacity is lesser that's why the power consumption needs are also lower so these are not you know detrimental to the climate while the large language models require large energy sets and larger computations that's why actually it can be detrimental to the energy security or climate for that particular territory large language models are trained on massive general data while small language models are generated are trained on a very small amount of data 
So through fine tuning, small language models can be customized for specific tasks and achieve accuracy and efficiency in doing them. So most small language models undergo targeted training and demand considerably less computing power and energy compared to the LLMs. So small language models also differ when it comes to inference speed and latency. So when we talk about the latency by which actually once you know an information is sought and by what time the information is received is denoted by latency. So small language models also differ when it comes to inference speed and latency. A small language models compact size allows for quicker processing and their cost makes them appealing to smaller organizations and research groups. That's why the smaller organizations and research groups actually have been using the smaller language models. When we talk about on device, you know, capabilities of artificial intelligence, then ultra small or a small language models will be the fine answer. So if in the GS3, if you are asked actually what is difference between small language models and large language models, I don't feel you will face any kind of difficulty. Then comes the third one and that is NHRC, National Human Rights Commission seeking accreditation status in Geneva. So the National Human Rights Commission is preparing to defend the union government's human rights processes at a meeting in Geneva that has started from first week, first week of May. A decision on whether India's human rights body will retain the A status, status A, is expected to be made in this particular meeting. The National Human Rights Commission report ratings were put on hold in 2023 after concerns were raised that its composition, procedure and presence of the police personnel, so its composition and the presence of the police personnel in human rights investigations and lack of gender and major minority representation in the committee, many people raised doubts over it. National Human Rights Commission, as you know, has an status in India where it has to represent, it has to it, it has the power to seek reports from anyone regarding human rights violation. It can visit any jails to see what are the conditions of the inmates there. National Human Rights Commission annually prepares a report and sends it to the parliament through president. And whatever the human rights violation or supposed violation happen, these are mentioned in those reports. The action taken on these and non-action taken on these actually are always mentioned. So the Geneva meeting will always, are always actually conducted or the accreditation meetings are conducted to give the status either A, B, so the categorization is awarded to the National Human Rights Commission of various countries. So since 2023, the, uh, this particular rating has been put on hold. And what were the concerns raised? Concerns raised that, you know, there are composition procedures of NHRC which are in doubt. Second was regarding presence of the police personnel in human rights investigations. And third is the lack of gender and minority representation in the committee or commission of the human rights commission of the human rights so the decision over whether the nhrc is given an a or b rating will affect its ability to vote at the united nation human rights council so there is a human rights council unhrc and india's ability or india's human rights commission national human rights commission's ability to vote there will be affected by it so the ministry of external affairs it understood to have reached out to various countries involved in the review process to make its case through various diplomatic channels. This is the second time the Modi government is facing a possible listing downgrade. Since being accredited in 1999, India has retained its A ranking in 2006 and 11. So these are the things. According to an SCA, in March 2023, the NHRC has failed to create conditions required to be able to operate independent of the government interference. So whenever you are writing a question about whether NHRC is a toothless tiger, you can mention even those topics also. But at last, you should also understand that NH every country has its own build. Every country has its own government system, which are sovereign enough. So no country actually can interfere in another country's matter or internal matters. And as far as the uh, uh, rating goes, the rating actually has been earlier also, uh, has been downgraded and upgraded after that. Since being accredited in 1999, India has retained its A ranking in 2006 and 11, while its status was deferred in 2016 
and restored after a year. According to a six-point submission by SCA in March 2023, the NHRC has failed to create conditions required to be able to operate independent of the government interference. In the submission, the committee has slammed India for the involvement of police officers in the investigation process, calling it a conflict of interest. So these points you can always mention. Then comes the third one that is Supreme Court backing EVMs and ruling out revival of the paper ballot. Supreme Court says that blind distress on EVMs is not helpful and Supreme Court has declined pleas for voter verification PAT slips to be given to electors and for 100% cross verification. So voter verification personal audit trial actually slips to be given to electors are, are given to the electors and are visible for seven seconds. Supreme Court has refused that there is a need for 100% cross verification because then it will defeat the purpose with which VV pets are introduced and it will then actually you know cause a greater adversity for results to be declared on time and elections to be to be uh, you know finished or votes to be cast in a particular time frame so this is the uh, result or the pronouncement of the supreme court regarding evms so the supreme court of india's rejection of the demand for 100 percent verification of the paper audit trial left by votes cast through electronic voting machines comes in the duration of the election the two concurring judgments of the bench reiterate the faith of the judiciary in the integrity of the electoral process in 2013 ruling the supreme court held that a paper trial is an indispensable requirement of free and fair elections in another case it favored the increase in the number of polling in the number of polling stations in which vv pat register verification would be done from one per assembly constituency or segments to five the introduction of a paper audit trial itself was in response to apprehensions that voters had no way of ascertaining if their votes were recorded correctly it is somewhat ironical that the verification system put in place to address such fear fears itself has become a bone of contention itself so voter verification paper audit trial system was introduced so that why uh, voters actually can get right to know what which vote they cast and whether the vote they have cast it has gone to a party for which they have casted the vote. So this is the matter. Then comes another one that is entering symbols in VVPAT units cannot be equated with uploading software, says the court. So the Supreme Court also said with the same in the same judgment that feeding serial numbers and names of the candidates and their party symbols in the bitmap file app of the uh, bitmap file images in the voter verification paper audit trail units cannot be equated with uploading software. The court was putting to rest apprehensions raised by petitioners that MLSA software could be entered into the VVPAT along with symbols. So the Supreme Court, after examining everything, actually talked about that if you are putting symbols, it does not mean that you are doing any kind of you know uh, interference with the uh, symbols of the VVPAT units when you are uploading the software with it. Not possible to pre-programs. EVMs also says court. So the Supreme Court also said that a return to the paper ballot will bring back the evils of yesteryears, making booth capturing a prevalent activity and it was anyway impossible to pre-program electronic voting machine in a spurious manner. So in the judgment actually both justices says that EVMs strike a deadly blow to booth capturing which is a criminal offense under one section, section 135A of the Representation of People's Act 1951 by not permitting what that four votes a minute. So unlike paper ballots, voting through EVMs is done by pressing a button, negating the major problem of invalidated votes. The EVMs have effectively eliminated booth capturing by restricting the rate of vote casting to four votes per minute. So there is a speed with which four votes can be cast per minute, the re, the re, the re, the re, thereby prolonging the time needed and thus checking insertion of the bogus votes. So the court has given full backing to the EVM system and even the voter verification paper audit trail system and at the larger it has given thumbs up to the electoral reforms that are brought in by the election commission. We stop it here. If you feel that we were able to deliver good quality content, like and share the button. Thank you. Uh, for more such videos, you can like the button and subscribe the channel. Thank you.